Well, <coughs> this video has a bit of a story behind it. <coughs> and it's not actually about this engine. Well, not directly about this engine anyway. This beautiful copper, mainly all copper, um, model steam engine, I picked this up on eBay about ooh, 12 and a half years ago. And in fact, I've got the actual date. The auction was on the 27th of September, 2010. Now, this is a, a truly superb scratch built engine, out, as I think you can see. I mean, it is just beautiful. Workmanship is, fa is fantastic. And I, I really, really um, like this engine. I must do another video on it because I did a video on it way back in 2010. But um, my videos back then, uh, they, they were not really the cinematic Oscar worthy performances that obviously you get from my channel today. <laughs> so yes, I must do a retrospective on this engine uh, because well, it's 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 worth it and it's just a fantastic engine to see to see running. So, what's the story then? Well, I actually saved a screenshot and I'll pop it up in the video so you can see it, but I'll of the auction website for the listing for this engine. Now, I'll read you what the seller said in the listing, and I kept it because I, I just thought it was you know, worthwhile keeping. It's very interesting. This is the largest and the last of the five model steam engines that we have recently purchased in an estate clearance. We believe they were all made by hand in the gentleman's workshop and are all copper and brass. And it goes on to describe this particular engine. Now, I remember at the time that there were other engines, but I don't remember what they looked like. I definitely bid on some of the other engines, but this was the only one that I won the auction for. And I'll tell you what I paid for it. I paid £46 for this engine plus £7 shipping, which I think was an absolute bargain. Now to this day, I always keep in the back of my mind about these engines and the fact that there were five. And I'm always keeping my eye open on eBay when I'm doing my general searches for, you know, model steam engines. And a week or so ago, I spotted this one. Now, I don't know whether these were definitely made by the same chap, but there are some glaringly basic similarities. Now, I think if they were, this was probably an earlier attempt because the quality of workmanship on this one is not as good as this one. But there are some s s t glaring similarities. The regulator valve is pretty much identical on both of, both of these engines. And I've not seen one like that on another engine. This one is, I think he made this safety valve. That's a commercial safety valve, the kind you find on model steam locomotives. The chimneys are exactly the same. The firebox is the same. The engine mount is the same. Now, obviously the crank's different on here and so is the cylinder, but the construction is very, very similar. And it's got the same tube for the crankshaft on both models with the oil hole in it. I mean, yeah, this one is on a metal base. Now I put it on this wooden base. This is, I went through a phase of putting these on wooden bases, um, but this had a metal base and this one obviously has a wooden base. But um, anyway, we'll, um, we'll stick it on the turntable and we'll have a closer look at it. So there you go. It is, as I said, remarkably similar. Not quite up to the same standard, so, but I think he was learning his tradecraft on this one. It even has the exact same number of holes in the firebox on each side, which is nine. So yeah, I, I, it has a stay, the boiler has a stay, which again is um, you know, unusual in such a small boiler. It's not really necessary for the pressures that these things operate at. Um, there are obviously some differences. This one's got a brass boiler, the other one's got a copper boiler, but no, I, I am pretty much convinced that this engine is, is made by the same guy, which I'm just so pleased about because I now have two of the engines that this gentleman made in its workshop and, and, and they really are fantastic. So yeah, um, what am I gonna do? Well, I am gonna take it apart, clean it all up and put it back together again. I believe that the there's some insulation material on the base of the firebox, which looks to me like it might be asbestos. So we'll need to remove that. But 
yeah, I'm sure it'll it'll it'll, it'll come apart really well and clean up really easily. So <clears throat> I'm I, I I think that that's basically what I'll do. I may well sand down the wooden base um, to get rid of the burn marks. I'll see how deep they are uh, in the base here at this end, but to, uh, and then give it some finishing oil. But no, um, it really is. Uh, uh, a, a wonderful little thing and i i am as i said i am absolutely convinced that this is this was made by the same guy so let's get it stripped down and cleaned up okay so let's see if we can get this stripped down now i've loosened off the safety valve so we'll take that out first and the level plug at the back here We'll take the chimney off next. Now on the other one, this just, there was a, a the, the exhaust pipe is just bent up and the chimney's got a, obviously got a hole in the bottom of it and it just slides over the pipe, which this one does as well. So yeah, there's your chimney. <coughs> okay, so take the cylinder off next. So we've got a spanner for that. Yeah, this has actually been oiled, so <clears throat> this is this, this, uh, hopefully should all come apart nice and easily. Right, I'll just come back to that as I'm going to have to turn that quarter turn at a time. Yeah, so that uh, that was no drama. There's the little cylinder and the piston and he's grooved it which the which again that's another indication oh now well that's going to get sharp but yes there's three grooves in the piston and the other one is grooved as well so again all indications that <coughs> this is made by the same guy now there is a little tiny allen screw grub screw which holds the flywheel in place i've loosened that so hopefully we should be able to pull the crankshaft out It says. Come on, that's a bit stiff. Oh, so there's the flywheel. Very, very nicely machined out of a lump of brass. And the uh, crankshaft. All very well made. Right, so what's next? I think we will attempt to undo the nuts that hold the engine frame to the to their posts let's have a look this is all 6ba stuff on here well, maybe not let's see if i got a spanner the right size for that i think we've probably got a box spanner that's the right size for those is that gonna fit go on little bugger ah there we go Tight, but it's coming loose now. Oh, this one. Oh, that one's a lot looser. That's all right. That's one. There's the other one. Well, that should be loose now, which it is. And Kidoki, put those in there. I think we will have a go at <clears throat> this now. If I see me, I've got a spanner. That's the right size, big enough. Let's try. No, let's get the small adjustable. Now I want to be careful here because we don't want to damage any of the pipe work, but hopefully. should come oh well, that was nice and easy oh uh, there we go <clears throat> so that's all our pipe work free let's see if we can get that one off as well oh, 
Yeah, I think we're going to need a spanner for that. I think the jaws on the on the adjustable are just too big. They are. Uh, so we're going to definitely need a spanner for that one. Again, I think it's bigger than I think. Yes, it is. All right, let's go and find a spanner. Well, <coughs> the only one I've got that actually sort of fits is a 12 mil metric, but it does go on, so we'll try that. Yes, I wasn't actually that tight. So good. I don't know whether he whether he made these or, or not, but they, they, this is very very similar to the one that's on on the other engine. Okay, so where do we go from here? Let's have a look. So there is a cross piece uh, where you can see that in there that the uh, boiler is bolted to. I don't know whether there's anything on this end or not. I think it would probably pay to now remove the whole firebox and boiler from the base plate. So we'll do that next. Just four wood screws by the looks of things. Yeah. Self tappers actually, I think. Well, they weren't tight, so yeah, let's lifted that off of there so we can have a look underneath. Yes, yeah, so I have a feeling that is very definitely asbestos that's got to go. So, there you go, it's definitely been fired quite a bit so. Yeah, hopefully if I just remove that nut, I should be able to get the uh, get the boiler out. So we'll do that next. Well, it turns out that um, that nut was actually loose. There we go, there's a washer on the end of it. So we're kind of hoping that's all that's holding the boiler in place. Ah, there we go. Yes. So there you go, there's the boiler. Interesting construction. It's obviously been rolled out of a sheet of brass and it's got a lip joint on it down that side. Now, nothing wrong with that, that'll, that'll do the job. Um, it certainly needs cleaning up, it's fairly filthy. I'll put that to one side. And that just leaves the firebox. Well, again, the, you know, I'm probably not gonna bother, you know, taking it apart any further. Um, I might take these screws out. They, they just hold this cross member in place that allow me to clean that up. But no, I, th I think uh, I think that'll about do it for the disassembly. Oh, I'll probably um, uh, obviously take those off the base and then we can give that a good old sanding down. So yeah, I think that'll do for the disassembly.